go. Okay. Well, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everyone. And thank you for tuning in to another program of A Greater Understanding. Today, uh, we had planned on interviewing Justin Phillips. Yeah. And it's uh, his, he's a missionary to the abortion clinics to preserve life. Um, we're making a plea to the hearts of the world to help him to continue to help stop the sacrificing of innocent blood. So stay tuned and uh, uh, thank you for joining our program. Thank you for, for uh, attending our program, and uh, we certainly do appreciate the support that we've been getting. Uh, this is a very serious issue. Um, Justin Phillips is uh, one of eight defendants, just want to read this, indicted in Michigan for obstructing a reproductive health services facility, reproductive health services. It's actually a, a glorified abortion clinic. Um, just for a little understanding of what, what we do here, um, uh, I know you're here on a greater understanding every Tuesday, uh, Lord willing, as long as there's breath in my lungs and uh, uh, we have the opportunity to put forth the gospel, the true gospel. We're thanking uh, John uh, Wilson and Steve Myers for allowing that to happen. Uh, today... Uh, we do that from 11 to 12. And then uh, tonight, we have a Bible study. And that Bible study is sent forth from um, the great city of Flint, Michigan at the um, Flint Public Library. Tonight, we're going to talk about, and usually I have Eddie Dombrowski with me, and he'll be there. Um, what is the biblical fasting and how does it work? Now, I personally have was fasting for approximately um, 46 days. And when you want to enter that Bible study tonight, uh, it's all over the world, you can uh, dial 701-802-5180. That's 701-802-5180. And um, um, when you dial that, then you'd be required to um, uh, have the access code, which is 6344132-POUND. That's 6344132-POUND, and you're on the Bible study. That Bible study, again, is done from the great city of Flint, Michigan, at the Flint Public Library. Uh, and it's sent out to the world. And uh, tonight our topic is, what is biblical fasting and does it work? Um, that's, that's a wonderful topic. Now, I, like I said, I, I uh, fasted for 46 days. I am not no longer fasting. However, <clears throat> I lost approximately um, 38 pounds, 38 pounds, almost 40 pounds in that short period of time. And uh, fasting... Uh, to the Christian life is for many reasons. It's for health reasons, detoxing the body, uh, also filling up with the Holy Spirit and the Lord. And uh, I've gotten many compliments from pastors that I've delivered messages during my fast uh, because of the clearness of, of my speech and words and that type of thing. And that's what we'll do with fasting along from the health benefits. Um, also, on Saturday, I do a uh, 
program on WSNL Christian Talk Radio, which is out of Grand Blank. It goes to um, uh, Flint, Saginaw, Bay City, and Midland. And I've sent the link. Uh, if you want to attend, you can go to WSNL uh, Christian Talk and uh, get the link. And you can share it with your family, your friends, and your enemies. And why do I say your enemies, brothers and sisters? Um, <clears throat> those of you that have received Jesus Christ. But, uh, uh, you know, Muslims, Jews, whoever is attending, uh, we welcome everyone to attend our, our either our Bible study, our uh, radio program uh, that we do on Saturday at noon and Sunday, sometimes at one o'clock at air. And uh, we're going to talk about uh, this Saturday, April the 15th, uh, which just happens to be tax day. Uh, do you believe that you're loved enough? Do you believe that you're loved enough? That's a good question. Uh, some of you out there don't think that you're loved enough. But uh, sometimes some of us that follow our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, don't think we're loved enough. And we think that he's just quiet. Um, he may be quiet to you, uh, but he's all the time working. He's uh, just like uh, our, 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 the song is. Uh, he's a miracle worker, promise keeper, uh, and he's also my Lord and Savior. And uh, we're not here to force you to do anything that you don't want to do. It's important. It's in, very important that you hear uh, every truth that is out there. And I believe that the truth of the 66 books that are in this Bible canonized for one purpose and one purpose only and that's to witness who Jesus Christ is, not was, is. And he's alive. He's sitting at the right hand of the Father. How do I know? It says it in the Word of God. Uh, sitting at the right hand of the Father, and he's testifying what he did. Um, if he wasn't testifying what he did, then it would take something more than what Jesus is doing, right? Um Jesus plus nothing is everything. Jesus plus something is nothing. Well, today um, we found out that, that Justin Phillips is running a little bit late. Uh, he just texted me. He's down near McLaren. Um, and uh, let's see here. Yes. Um, near McLaren Hospital, which is on Ballinger Highway. And he should be here shortly, is what he tells us. Um, he's he's an interesting person. Um, he's there as a stumbling block for those that wish, wish to shed innocent blood. A stumbling block. And uh, it says in the Word of God, let's get right into it. Um, it says in the Word of God, if you go to Psalms 106.8, and here we have God's mercy endures forever. That's the caption of Psalm 106. Um, some people think that David was the only psalmist he was not. Uh, the psalms are actually songs that are sung to, to God, our Lord and Savior. And if you go to 106.8, uh, it says, Nevertheless, he saved them for his namesake, that he might make his mighty power to be known. Psalms 106, 8, his mighty power to be known. And um, it says here that he rebuked the Red Sea. He also, it was dried up so that he led through the depths as through the wilderness, um, Israel, to cross the wet Red Sea. And uh, it's amazing how that, that happened. Uh, the things of God are true and faithful, because that's what he is. He's faithful and true. It says that in Revelation. And uh, if you go to Proverbs 6, 16 through 17, Proverbs 6, 16 through 17, uh, it talks about here the things that God hates. Okay, the Lord, it says, These six things doth the Lord hate, yea, seven are an abomination unto him. One, a proud look. What is a proud look? That's pride. That's pride. 
um, a lying tongue. Uh, our God is not a man that he should lie. Hands that shed innocent blood. That's what we're talking about today. Hands that shed innocent blood. Those of you out there, uh, doctors, and, and uh, you call yourself doctors, preservation of life. Uh, some of you have never, uh, other than when you got your medical license, uh, quoted the Hippocratic Oath. Uh, some of you don't go by that, which is to preserve life at all costs. And uh, they've used the excuse, well, the life of what? The life of the woman? Um, you know, I believe that, that God preserves both. Both lives should be preserved. And talks about uh, a heart that deviseth wicked imaginations. Now, what are wicked imaginations? Imaginations that are non-believing, non-believing in Jesus Christ. Feet that be swift in running to mischief. There's a lot of people out there that have feet that are swift running to mischief. And mischief is not uh, something that causes harmony and love with one another. It causes dissension. It causes problems like that. And that, that's what we're talking about here. Also, a false witness that speaketh lies. False witness. Uh, some of us out here, now this, this particular situation of these eight individuals that were indicted, in the federal court on the 28th, I believe, of February. One of them is Justin Phillips. That'll be here shortly. It says that the Justice Department announced today, and that would have been February 22nd, 2023. That's just this last 22nd of February. Announced today an individual indictment charging eight people with federal civil right offenses hmm. and violations of the freedom of access to clinic entrances, access to clinic entrances. I don't see an abortion clinic as being a clinic entrance. And according to court documents, uh, Calvin uh, Zastro, Chester Gallagher, Heather Idoni, Carolyn Davis, Joe Curry and Justin Phillips, and last, Eva Eddy, Edley, Eva Edley. She is 88 years old, and Eva Zartro are charged with engaging in a civil rights conspiracy with the violating of the FACE Act in connection with an uh, August 2020 blockade of reproductive health care clinic in Sterling Heights, Michigan. Now, Michigan is, is one of the states that is being used as an example for abortions, as an example for transgender, an example for all of these things that were initiated in Proposal 3. And... Uh, uh, giving the youth, the child, the power of their own body. And they're not talking about anything as, as far as the age of consent. Um, that means that a 12-year-old girl can offer her body for sexual uh, things um, on her own accord. And uh, this is causing not just havoc, but misunderstanding throughout uh, our country, our state, our country, and the world. And the FACE Act, in connection with an August 2020 blockade of a reproductive health care clinic in Sterling Heights, Michigan. In addition, um, Idony and, and Edley were also charged with violating the FACE Act in connection with an April 2021 blockade of a reproductive health care clinic in Saginaw, Michigan. The indictment returned by a federal grand jury alleges that on August the 27th, 2020, all eight defendants engaged in a conspiracy to prevent the Sterling Heights Clinic from providing patients <laughs> there from um, receiving 
Reproductive Health Services. According to the indictment, Gallagher advertised the Sterling Heights Clinic blockade on social media, and he and Curry uh, live streamed the incident. The defendants uh, convert at a local, convened a local uh, location near Sterling Heights Clinic where an uncharged co conspirator who recorded the incident announced that the defendants were going over to stand in front of the door and interpose. The indictment also uh, alleges that all eight defendants violated the FACE Act by using physical obstructions to intimidate and interfere with the Sterling Heights Clinic's employees and patients because the clinic's employees were providing and the patients were seeking reproductive health services. <laughs> yeah, well, uh, that right there is the one thing that God hates, a false witness that speaketh lies and soweth he or she that soweth discord among brethren, among brethren. Um, that right there <clears throat> is important to understand, shedding of innocent blood. Now, we're making, again, we're making a plea to the hearts of the world. And there's a lot of you out there that listen to our program from all over the world to help Justin Phillips to continue to help stop the sacrificing and shedding of innocent blood that we were talking about. See, God will not hold any blameless for the deaths of innocents. Why? It's because of the program that we did last week. If you remember, and I'm sure many of you listened to last week when we interviewed Tom Wesley Powell, um, and that question was, can God forgive abortion? also what we need to do. And he talked about Jeremiah's ministry question that we must all repent, not some, but all repent that uh, are not just a part of the abortion uh, situation, but those that say, well, you know, I'm not a part of the abortion situation, so I really don't have to do anything. But repentance, repentance is there to stand in the way, just like these eight uh, indicted uh, individuals in federal court against the FACE Act uh, did to preserve life, to preserve life at all costs. You see, there's many doctors and medical professionals that ab abort uh, abortion. And abortion is what? It's one of the Ten Commandments. Thou shalt not, not kill, murder. Murder is taking the life of someone or a baby a child, an individual that does not belong to you and it belongs to God. If you understand the scientific situation, the medical scientific situation, when a man and a woman come together and an egg is fertilized with semen, all right, that fertilization in the mother's womb, the mother's blood does not enter into the baby, but the father's does. And the father's blood is what carries on the tradition um, of life, <clears throat> the father's blood. So with that being understood, is that, that people say, well, it's the woman's choice with her body. No, that life that is developing in the womb, the womb should be the most sacred, <coughs> safe place on the face of the planet. Uh, you know, we, I would not be here if my mother did not, uh, have the sanctity of life. Um, my mother, Nabiya Sifa, and my father, Nassib Joseph Sifa, who resided in Flint, Michigan, <coughs> uh, together as husband and wife, when I was born, um, they were here. They, they loved life. They, they believed in the preservation of life. And had they not do that, 
um, I wouldn't be here. And also your mothers and fathers that you are listening to this program from all over the world have um, revered the sanctity of innocent babies. Um, and otherwise you wouldn't be listening to this program. You would be like many of the lost innocent lives that have been lost through abortion, some 60 to 70 million, 60 to 70 million, that's recorded abortions, uh, since Roe versus Wade in 1973. Now, we all know that that was overturned. And it's good that that was overturned. And why was that overturned? Is because on the federal level, they had sent the decision to the states. Now, I believe in states' rights. I believe that the state has precedent over any federal uh, situation. And why is that? It's because uh, the states, every state in the United States of America is separate and autonomous from the governor down to us, we the people. And we have a say-so. We have a say-so. Again, I want to remind you that Michigan is a pilot program for a lot of these transgender situations, for um, castrating of of children, innocent children, um, child trafficking, sex trafficking, all these things are developed from that Proposal 3 that supposedly passed. And again, we're questioning the sanctity of the vote, the sanctity of the vote. As you know, um, I voted against Proposal 1, 2, and 3. I want you to know that. And many of you out there did. In other countries, you have situations that are facing your government also in these uh, situations of abortion, of taking of innocent life. And what happens here is that we have to stand strong. Now, we weren't there to count the votes. Um, and a lot of the things that happen in our political institutions, because the United States was revered as a democracy, and it, and it says in the preamble of the Constitution, we the people in the United States of America who hold these truths to be solemn. What? The provisionation of life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. And that's important. That's important. The pursuit of happiness, life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. And I believe that uh, Justin Phillips is, is, is coming in here in a minute. And uh, he's, he's a wonderful man. He's a kind man. He's a man that is what? Wants to preserve life. He's put his life on the line. Uh, and he's going to talk about here in a minute uh, some very important issues, uh, not <laughs> reproductive clinics. I like that, how, they, how they, they mentioned that. Reproductive clinics, health services. Yes, health services for reproductive clinics. Do you know that um, um, Sanger, when she started uh, Planned Parenthood, she started it, why? Because she needed the um, uh, Roe versus Wade decision for the morning after pill. And if you think uh, it's bad to abort babies, uh, the morning after pill is also um, the, what do they call that? The blue pill or whatever, um, the morning after where they are actually um, conducting uh, either fornication or um, of having sex outside of marriage. Um, and that in itself is wrong. I think sex is wonderful uh, in marriage. Um, and that's where it should be. But we have right now coming in, um, we have Justin Phillips. I think he's at the door here. Uh, Justin? Yeah, thank you for coming yeah. in, for coming on our program. This is Justin Phillips. That's the man we were talking about earlier. Uh, you know, usually our programs are uh, demonically influenced and they don't want the truth to get out. Oh, yeah, yeah, I hear you. <laughs> you know, we were just going over uh, what you have done with the other seven indictees. Okay. Uh, and the one woman, what's her name? She's 88 years old. Eva Edel. Eva Edel, mm -hmm. 88 years old. 
Yeah. And uh, you were um, arraigned. Yeah, in yeah. Federal court was it the twenty eighth of February or twenty um, second? I think it was. Um, yeah, March. I think it was when I was indicted, and then a few weeks later, towards the end of March, Eva Edo was. Just yes. Was yes. Oh, so here, you like, want to put on your oh, your headset? Yeah, yeah. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, I can hear you. There we go. Okay. Uh, we certainly thank you for, for being in our program. Yeah, thanks for having me. And uh, we are concerned about the preservation of life. You know, last week we talked with a fellow by the name of Tom Wesley Powell. Okay. And he handed out that pamphlet mm. at a uh, where we, we, we went to the, um, the Flint and Counter Group. Oh, yeah. And he's going to yep. hand it to a million households in the state of Michigan about abortion. Mm -hmm. And his thing was... Uh, with uh, Jeremiah's uh, ministry question that we should all repent, mm -hmm. all of us, whether or not we're involved like you are. Mm -hmm. um, I, I want to take you back to, I think, this last Thursday meeting. Okay. And there was Pastor Greg Rowan. Mm -hmm. And he asked you a question. Okay. He says, you need an attorney, a, a, a real attorney, not a public pretender mm -hmm. or defender, it is mm -hmm. called, mm -hmm. but a real attorney representing you is that what they told you yeah i have a friend that's a lawyer that was telling me that okay mm -hmm. and uh, a real attorney what is the cost because we're making a plea to the world to help you uh, and you can send your money here to support uh justin phillips and also the other seven yeah. uh if, if need be um to have legal representation mm -hmm. for your role in the preservation of the non-shedding of innocent blood, mm -hmm. okay? You know, the way they put it here, uh, Justin, um, the uh, the jail, uh, DOJ, DOJ mm -hmm. Department of Justice, that you were, um, what does it say? Obstructing a reproductive health services facility. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it had nothing to do with reproduction and health services. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and that was in Sterling Heights. Yeah. You know, and also in Saginaw. Yeah, a couple are indicted for Sag in Saginaw too. And then there's a case in Tennessee and um, DC. So they're they're doing multiple different uh, people in different locations. Yeah, I, I admire you for taking a stand. Um, it, it's not your children, mm. but it's the Lord's children. Well, yeah, and I think like as Jeremiah and Jeremiah and all throughout the scripture, it, it really is our children, you know, because because the blood defiles the land, as the Bible says. And then Jeremiah, when they were going to stone, you know, put him to death, he said, you do what you want, but my blood will be on you and the inhabitants and the whole city. Right. So we're walking around with blood on our hands. Yes, we are. Um, and so it's so and if so it, if we don't. Um, stand up and and rescue that the babies and and speak out for them, then uh, then our kids and our grandkids will will face more judgment from God because we're already under His judgment. If we have children and grandchildren, <clears throat> yeah, right. Because according to Proposal Three, the child, regardless of the age, has autonomy over their decision making mm -hmm. without respect to an age of consent, mm -hmm. without respect to a parent or a guardian mm -hmm. making a decision, they have no authority over the children. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and that situation uh, is causing all kinds of havoc right now. Mm -hmm. um, as you know, Michigan is a, uh, how would you say, a pilot program for mm -hmm. the country and the world regarding the issues of abortion, mm -hmm. regarding issues of transgenderism, uh, mutilating the bodies of youth, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, castration of youth. Yeah. Um, and what do you think in your heart of hearts is the reason that these people are doing that, Justin? Well, the um, the like proposal three and all that you're talking about. Yeah. What is well, their because, motivation? Well, because, you know, a lot of times we think of, um, uh, you know, our role as followers of Christ is, is spiritual and um, it doesn't affect the physical. Um, but the Bible says that, you know, there's two children, either, either someone's a child of the devil or they're a child of God. That's right. And, and the children of the devil are doing things physically and we see them right before us. So they're, they're following their father, father, the devil. And we once were following our father, the devil, and we were living according to the passions of our flesh and we were doing all these things, but God had mercy on us. Yeah. 
he made us to be born again into his family. And so now as we we go as Christians, we're to proclaim the gospel and that Jesus is king and disciple the nations. It, it says disciple the nations for a reason. Yes. And then when we say Jesus is king, then that's that's political. But we've backed away from anything that could be political. And all we have to do is stand up and say Jesus is king. That's right. And we're and you can we're gonna we're gonna follow God and we're gonna follow Jesus, his son whom he sent to save us to save the world. And if you want to put us in prison or you want to whatever, then you do that. But we're following God. You know, they, they even mentioned to St. Paul, mm -hmm. uh, they're, they're going to stole him. They boil him in oil. And his dad yeah. says, well, the apps of the body be present with the Lord. Yeah. That's you know? how that's. Yeah. Or so, yeah. But you know, Justin, there's, there's Muslims, there's mm -hmm. Jews, mm -hmm. there's Baha'i, there's Druze. There's different religions from mm -hmm. all over the face of the earth that watch our program. Mm -hmm. They want to preserve life. Mm -hmm. Even though they're not following, they want the preservation of life. Mm -hmm. uh, they want uh, justice, mm -hmm. justice, uh, and they don't want to be told what to do by some government. Mm -hmm. And that's what's happening right now. The government is telling the people what to do. It's sort of like the what? The mm -hmm. tail wagging the dog, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. um, and the thing is, they want to preserve life. Now, you and I, we believe in Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Mm -hmm. You know, I know that for a fact. And I know that you put your life on the line like he did. Mm -hmm. And we just celebrated it just this last uh, mm -hmm. Passion Week mm -hmm. of our Lord going to the line, mm -hmm. sacrificing himself as the ultimate sacrifice, the shedding of his blood, his body being broken for the whole world. Mm -hmm. People that are not even going to follow him, he did that. Mm -hmm. um, and and the, the importance of that, but um, that was innocent blood too. Uh, they fought him and the father back and forth in the garden of Gethsemane before he went to the cross. Mm -hmm. And you know, the discussion, if not, you know, this cup can be, you know, mm -hmm. passed from me. Um, but he realized from the foundation of the world that man and woman would fall, mm -hmm. would fall. And the wages of sin, mm -hmm. uh, according to Romans six twenty three, is death. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, and we have that Adamic blood in us. And that's why Jesus had to come into the world and be the ultimate sacrifice, mm -hmm. the last sacrifice. Mm -hmm. uh, there's, you know, there's, there's uh, Pharisees and, 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 and Hebrews and uh, Israelites that, that believe their Messiah hasn't come yet. Mm -hmm. And they're waiting for him. Mm -hmm. um, I happen to believe that uh, Caiaphas, mm -hmm. who was when Jesus was walking on the earth, mm -hmm that declared that, that it's better for one man to die than all of us. Mm -hmm. He knew who Jesus was. I really believe after reading and, and the revelation that I, I've got, and probably you feel the same way. Well, he was a high he, priest. He was, yeah, he mm -hmm. knew he was the Messiah. Mm -hmm. And he was concerned because this high priest didn't come as a warrior mm -hmm. uh, Messiah, mm -hmm. which is what he's going to come this time. When he comes back, he'll be a warrior messiah. Mm -hmm. Then he came for love and for unity. He came for three purposes. One, to, to save what was lost, which was us. Mm -hmm. To heal the brokenhearted. Okay. And also to destroy the works of the enemy. Mm -hmm. And he did that. Mm -hmm. He did that. And us receiving that. And those of you at the end of this program will get the opportunity to receive Jesus Christ, your Lord and Savior, and the Holy Spirit if you choose to do that. We're not forcing anyone mm. to, to, to do that because, you know, our beliefs and our faith does not have to be sold to anyone. Mm. It's something that we love mm. and we want to share uh, with, with the, the world. Yeah, we've been made ambassadors of Christ Jesus. Yes. And God's given us his son. And it's the only way to salvation. It's the only way to God. There's one God. There's one mediator between man and God, the man, Christ Jesus. Jesus. And the devil works to you know make all kinds of different things and paths and different ways to God, but there's only one. And we're all our responsibility is to go and tell people of the gospel and the, and the word never returns void and God saves his people because he finished it there on the cross, you know. So his people he saves, you know. So now you put your life on the line. Mm. And uh, what are you facing, you and the eight? Well, supposedly conspirators. Yeah, I, um, oh, well, there's different sentences, but there's 11 years is what I'm facing. 11 yeah. years mm -hmm. in prison. Yeah, like a different, yeah. Mm -hmm. If you do not prevail, if justice is not prevailing, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. 
Um, and I want to remind you, because I overheard a conversation with Pastor Greg Rowan. Mm -hmm. um, if you obtain an attorney mm -hmm. and you prevail, mm -hmm. what are you going to do next? Well, we just keep going. <laughs> keep yeah. going back yeah. to the same thing. Yeah, yeah. You are a marvelous believer in Jesus Christ. Whoa. You take your your faith to the nth degree, just like Jesus did. Well, the, the, he, um, I was a wicked man, lost in sin, and he set me free. And and uh, he is he's everything, and to know him is everything. And so to know him is to follow him, and to follow him is suffering and, and persecution a lot of times. But but it's the love of God that that compels us, right? Mm -hmm. Because as the word says, that because one has died for all, there you know, therefore all have died, and he died for all that no one would live for themselves, but for him who for their sake died and was raised. And so and so it's not me, it's it's the spirit of God that that does his work in me, that that made me new and and gives me desires to where I just want to know him. I don't want anything else. I want him. <laughs> I, I know I mentioned to uh, others when, before you came that, you know, thank God that those that are listening, mm. their mothers respected the sanctity of life. Yeah. Otherwise, we wouldn't be here. Yeah. When well, the Bible says that all who hate me love death, you know, so those who hate wisdom, who hate God, they, they love death. And so it works. That's, that's what we're seeing, you know. So... You prevail in court. You're going to go back to helping preserve mm -hmm. and the non-sacrificing and killing of innocent blood. Well, we, we have really see, need to see that there's real people being killed. Um, a lot of times we we forget them and we don't really realize. We don't act like there's real people being slaughtered. You know, they're yeah, it's unfortunate. Yeah, it's bad. But like you know, what well, I got to do this or that. But there's real people that are being murdered and God says to whatever you did for the least of these, you did for me, right? Whatever you did not do for the least of these, you did not do for me. And so we're to, to love Christ, to follow him is to, is to help the most poor and the needy, um, the most defenseless. And they really act like they're being killed. Mm -hmm. You know, and if our family members were being killed or our, someone was going to kill our children, would we, would we, uh, well, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta, Career, I gotta finish, and I gotta do this and that, and I need to go make, I need to mow, mow my lawn, you know, yeah. and stuff like that. So it's like we really, Lord, that's what the Lord opened my eyes to it and broke my broke me of my apathy and my complacency. And even still today, I something I need to repent of a lot is my apathy and complacency, you know, and just my need for Him because I don't love people the way I ought. That's why we need him, you know, and that's why every day we we wake up and Lord, I need you, you know. <laughs> so. It started in the beginning in the Garden of Eden mm -hmm. when Cain killed Abel. Mm -hmm. Abel was one of the first people to die, mm -hmm. and the Lord looked to Cain and says, "Cain, your brother's blood cries to me. Mm -hmm. Your brother's blood cries to me." And he said that famous thing in the Bible. Am I my brother's keeper? Yeah. And yet we are our brother's keeper. Yeah, it's interesting, isn't it, when you think about it? Because the Lord talks about, you know, um, those who cry to me, you know, cry out to me. And then, um, you know, we're called to cry out to the Lord for for justice, for um, for deliverance. Um, and, then, and then when you think about Cain and Abel, and he says, the, the voice of your brother's blood cries out to me from the earth. And so there is all over the country, thousands and thousands of people, little babies being slain every day. And their blood is literally crying out to God for justice and judgment upon the land. So that their blood this, yeah, is crying out to God. For us to be wiped out. Wow. <laughs> wow. <laughs> you know, so, like, so, and then you think, when I thought of this like years ago, and I, and um, has a lot of... Um, Probably half, well, but more than half of abortions are what we call pill kills, and it works up to eleven weeks. And they take a pill, and then they go home and take another pill, and then they give birth to a dead baby in, in the toilet, basically a lot of times, and just yeah. you know they flush them down the toilet, and then so and then that goes in our water system, and then so it just all that blood is spreading out all throughout the cities, and it's all crying out to God for justice. Wow! And so it's not whereas before it was all you know surgically you go to this place and the blood shed there. Well, the devil, he's like, want to get it spread everywhere. So we'll give him with a pill. And then and then now we're just, you know, so if you think, well, I don't have a, a mill in my abortion clinic in my city where they're going, 
they're going into the cities that do, and then they're coming back, and the baby's being killed in in your suburb or in your in your town. You know. Thank you for calling. This is Reverend Lawrence Adel Sifa, and you're on the air with uh, uh, a greater understanding. Who's calling? Hello. Uh, well, you're on the air. We're doing a podcast to the world. I'm Reverend Lawrence Adele Sifa. Can I call you back? Yes. Okay. Thank you so much. Um, but, you know, the thing is, uh, we are our brother's keeper. Mm -hmm. And we also should have, you know, our brothers are those that have received Jesus Christ, the Lord and Savior. Mm -hmm. But also, there's a sanctity for life for those that have not. Yeah, because everyone's been created in the image of God. In the image of God, mm -hmm. in his likeness. Mm -hmm. and, and we're going to go over that in a minute, but the thing is, what we tell everyone is that they should uh, share this podcast mm -hmm. with their family, mm -hmm. their friends, and their enemies. Mm -hmm. Because their enemies just might one day become their brother or sister in yeah, Christ. Yeah, you yeah, know? Yeah. And that's why we're supposed to love our enemies, Yeah, it says in the Bible. But um, the thing is, you know, you mentioned that we're made in God's likeness or image. Mm -hmm. And I want to refer to Genesis 1.26. Um, and, and the thing is, uh, before God says that in Genesis uh, 1.26, he goes through 1 to 25 scriptures and he speaks everything into existence. Mm -hmm. Speech. There's one thing that he didn't do with speech, and that's us. Mm. He made us in the miry clay, and he formed us with his hands. Mm. We weren't spoken into existence because we are the jewel in the crown of creation. Mm. And if you go to Genesis 126, and it says, and God said, now he's speaking again, mm -hmm. let us make man in our image, okay, the image of God, after our likeness, mm -hmm. okay? And let them, now before that, what does that mean? That means that for 25 scriptures, he's speaking things. Mm. And then he wants us, he's making us into his likeness image. Hasn't created, he has what is called, I call the board of directors meeting between the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Let us. And he's talking about making us like him. Mm -hmm. Able to what? Speak and create. You know, our words create. You know, the, the saying that sticks and stones will break my bones, but names will never hurt me. Mm -hmm. That's a lie from the pits of hell. Mm -hmm. You know, the thing is, if you get beat up from someone, usually the pain will subside. Mm -hmm. But the words will endure for almost ever. Mm -hmm. The things that are spoken against one another. And the thing is here, he gave us dominion over the fish of the sea, over the fowls of the air, over the cattle and over all the earth and every creeping thing. Do you know what the biggest creep is on earth? Satan. Mm. <laughs> He's the biggest creep. We had authority over that. So then after that, he says, so God created man in his own image. Mm -hmm. In the image of God, he created him male and female. He created them. And then God blessed them and said upon them, be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth. Abortion is not replenishing the earth. Mm. It's not being fruitful and multiply, mm. but subdue it and have dominion. And he goes over the fish of the sea and the fowls of the air and that uh, over everything in the earth. And then what happens is after creating men, um, he puts them in the garden, mm. lets them tend the garden. That's what we're doing here. We're tending the garden. Mm. I believe right here is we're letting the world know, okay, <clears throat> What Justin Phillips is doing, along with those other seven individuals and people all over mm. that are standing up for the right to life, mm. for the right to life. Now, I'm going to ask you a question. There's been questions, and, and the time has changed. When does a fetus become life? Well, before before the baby's a fetus at the moment of conce conception, you know. Okay, at conception. Yeah. yeah. You know, it says in the Bible that God knew us mm -hmm. before we were in our mother's womb. Mm -hmm. So do you think maybe in the mind of God, conception began? Mm -hmm. The yeah. mind of God, before the man and woman came together and the, and the egg was fertilized. with this, I mean, mm -hmm. and, and that life, that life is so important. Uh, if you go to uh, Second Chronicles, mm -hmm. 
And this is a scripture that uh, that's very important. Um, first and Second Chronicles is actually Third and Fourth Kings, mm. <laughs> First and Second Kings. But if you go to Second Chronicles, Justin, um, seven, and this is when the temple was made by Solomon. Mm -hmm. He built the temple of David. Yeah. Solomon, they call it, with his daddy's money, you know, and, and all the provisions mm -hmm. his dad provided. And he's at this point blessing the temple. And if you go to Second Chronicles 7, it says, Now when Solomon had made an end of praying, the fire came down from heaven and consumed the burnt offerings and the sacrifice and the glory of the Lord filled the house. Mm -hmm. The glory of the Lord filled the house. And the priests could not enter into the house of the Lord because the glory of the Lord had filled the Lord's house. And when all the children of Israel, children, you know, all of us are children. If we're 100 years old, we're a child mm -hmm. of God. God has no grandchildren. Did you know that? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Saw how the fire came down and the glory of the Lord upon the house. And they bestowed themselves with their face to the ground upon the pavement and worshiped. And if you look at 2 Chronicles 7, 14, every embryo, that's the smallest an embryo, mm -hmm. a seed and egg, right? Every embryo actually has a purpose under God. Mm -hmm. Do you believe that? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it says here, it says, this is, this is, uh, God speaking to, to Solomon and the people at that time, and even us 2,000 years in the future. Mm -hmm. Second Chronicles 7.14, If my people, which are called by my name, mm -hmm. that's those that believe in the, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, shall humble themselves, okay, and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, which is the non-believing ways, which is what they're doing in abortion clinics, mm -hmm. you know, not respecting life. You know, the womb should be the safest place on the face of the earth, mm -hmm. you know. Then I will hear from heaven and forgive their sin and will heal their land, mm -hmm. heal their land. Um, he has a purpose for all of us, even the unborn. Yeah. And, you know, um, I've done a, lot, done a lot of programs on abortion, things like that. Do you know why the enemy wants to destroy a life or lives? Um, I mean, his image. Yeah. God's image, you know. He hates God. Yeah. And could you imagine that one of those babies were to create um, healing for some disease that one of us could contract? Yeah. Create harmony between peoples. And that's what the enemy's against. Mm -hmm. He figures, well, I'll stop him right there. Mm -hmm. uh, if I can, if I can murder or kill enough, right? And, and you know, some of you out there uh, work in these abortion clinics and that think that you're doing this on your own. It's not really their own. They're motivated by some wicked spirit mm -hmm. that's causing them to do that. Mm -hmm. um, and what do you think we should do in the future, Justin? I mean, should we all take up our cross? Yeah. And die daily, mm -hmm. like like you're doing? Well, it's just, yeah, whatever the Lord has for each of us individually to follow Him, you know, every, we got the Lord is, um, He saved us on the good works, as the Bible says. He created, we're His craftsmanship or and made, you know, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared before and that we should walk in them. And so, uh, Everyone, has, every one of us has a different role to play, um, um, but it's all the same, really. It's following, following Jesus and whatever He calls us to, you know. And um, so, if it's, um, but, but as you prioritize things, we got to prioritize things in, in life. You know, there's always so many things going on in different, different areas. Things like the, the slaughter of, of the defenseless has to be right up at the top, right? I mean, mm -hmm. like yeah. there's. Um, and, but we fight, um, with the gospel, we fight with, with, um, with the word of God. Um, and he's the one that's good that, that is putting all of his enemies under his feet. And as long as we're following the head of the church, which is Christ, 
and and then he'll use us to put his enemies under his feet. <laughs> so true. Yeah. You know, true. So we should we should all help. Mm -hmm. And we should help those like yourselves that are on the front line. You know, we can support you. Now, where do you have a uh, uh, an email address or some website that we can, you know, there's people from all over the world that can support you? And Okay. Yeah. Our website's one life for life. All one word, just one, one life, life for life. Dot org. Dot org. Mm -hmm. And they can actually send money through that. Yeah. There's a donation thing on there where you, we, um, where you can send money, um, to, if you would like to. Okay. Um, and it, it, tell me how costly is it to have representation in a court of what they call law? Oh yeah. Well, there's, um, my friend, that's a lawyer. He's a good brother and he, um, uh, he would represent me if he could, but he doesn't do federal criminal uh, stuff. Um, okay. So, but he got me in touch with this one, this one brother that does, and uh, he's a he's a uh, Christian and loves the Lord, and um, but he his firm that he works in they can't do uh, pro bono criminal stuff, and it's twenty thousand dollars for the retainer just to retain them. <laughs> so, wow, um, it is really expensive. So. They can send money to you that way. Yeah, that way, yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. And um, for your cause. Yeah, yeah. For your cause. Yeah, maybe if there's something, like if they wanted it to go to the legal stuff, then they could put in there a note for the legal uh, defense. Okay. What, um, I want to ask you a serious question. Mm -hmm. When did you receive Jesus Christ, your Lord and Savior? Justin? Oh, I. Um, and how did that happen? I was saved when I was young. Um, grew up in the church and always believed in God and, and knew in the Lord. And, um, but I, uh, wasn't until later in life when I was baptized with the Holy Spirit. And I was, um, when I really saw that, um, as I always thought, you know, growing up, the way I understood the gospel was that Christ came to forgive me of my sins. And, um, and then now I have to, um, now my job is to not sin basically. <laughs> okay. And then um, once I saw the brother led me through this, the gospel. And once you, once I saw that, that what it, it's much more than that, he came to deliver us from our sins. Um, one of my favorite scriptures is when, um, the angel was telling Joseph that you shall call his name Jesus for he shall save his people from their sins. Um, and, and then I saw that it was my sin placed upon him on the cross and he stood condemned where I should have stood. And he took the justice of God, the wrath of God that I deserve. Um, and and in, in place, he gives me his righteousness. It is a perfect righteousness, the very righteousness of God that I'm clothed with. So I have peace with God. So I'm not trying and striving and working and doing, trying to be right with God. Uh -huh. I am, we're, I'm as right. I have the very righteousness of God through faith in Jesus Christ. Through faith, yeah. And so once I and I saw that, and I was like, "Whoa!" And, and the Lord, I was, was baptized with the Holy Spirit, and I saw, I, you know, and it was just, and He gave me a heart that that loved Him and wanted to follow Him. So, what mo motivated you? The the faith and love of, of Jesus Christ motivated you to do what you're doing. Yeah, I just wanted to, um, um, I just remember crying out to the Lord, like to make me a, a bold witness, you know, that I wouldn't be ashamed of him, that I would, um, that I would, that he would use me anyways, that he would see fit that, you know, like kind of like Isaiah, Lord, here I am, send me, you know, whatever you want me to do, you know, and he, uh, and he sent me out of the mills and opened my eyes to that, to where I really, could really see it for what it was, um, uh, a concentration camp that's way worse than Nazi Germany. The the people that we talk about in history books and how evil that was, what they did, and how how we're multiple times worse than Nazi Germany, and yet they had them like sitting here, you know, this it's a great America country and stuff. And then I saw how wicked the country really is, and how unjust it is, and and um, and uh, uh, so I just kind of yeah, just opened my eyes to it, and then I just then. Lord brings me out to the abortion clinics every day, and I um, 
and I tell people about the love of Jesus, the love of God in Jesus Christ, about sin and rebuking sin and exposing the darkness and telling people that there's the, of the Savior, the one that saved me, the only Savior uh, of the world. Um, and I've seen God save um, hundreds and hundreds of babies, um, 508 babies I've seen God save, um, moms and dads that were going to kill their babies and they, oh, the Lord had mercy on, on them and they changed their mind and I have a whole lot of babies in my hands that, that would have been killed, you know, and now they're alive. And, um, and uh, so they're real, they're real life. They're real people. And it's time that as a country, as a people, we stop pretending that they're not real people. And we stop pretending that, that they're not the, the, the real victim. And we and stop pretending that there's, that the mom or the dads are victims too. You know, they're, they're the victim is the baby. Yes. And there's very rare, I mean, there is rare cases where the mom's a victim too, because she's forced into that. I've seen that before where someone's forcing the, the mom in to kill the baby. And, um, but, but the vast majority of the time it's the mom that's, that's seeking and making an appointment to have her baby killed. And she's not a victim, but we make, but, but we make, we make her a victim. And therefore, because of that, then, then our responses to it are lessened. They're not as bad because, well, there's two victims. So it's, you know, um, but and we forget the babies. We forget who the real victim is. And that's, and it's their blood that's crying out to God for justice. Their blood is <laughs> crying out to God for justice. Mm-hmm. And, and we should mm-hmm. adhere to that if we're true believers, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. If we're true believers. Um, the thing is, well, 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 before you move on, like that, like I, I was thinking about when you said that, I love, I love the, um, the, com- the command of God is to everyone and everywhere. And it goes out to everyone, everywhere, all throughout the world, all over the place. And the command is to repent and believe the gospel. It's not a suggestion. It's not a, not a, you know, if you get around, it's a command. It, it's that a command. Is <laughs> yeah. Okay. He, he says, repent and believe the gospel. And if we don't, then we're going to perish in our sins will perish in our sins. Mm-hmm. What does that mean to you, perish in your sins? We we'll perish in our sins and be judged by God and spend eternity in the, under the wrath of God for all our sins. That's how bad our sin is. <laughs> um, that's how much we need a Savior. We need a Savior. Mm-hmm. That's what the law did. The mm-hmm. law said we cannot do it on our own, but we need a Savior. Yeah, we look at the law and we say, whoa, I can't, oh, I'm undone. I've broken every one of these. Right. <laughs> and uh, justice is coming for me. <clears throat> but but Jesus took the justice that we deserve willingly and laid his life that life down. He for went us. to the cross for us. Yeah. And the least we can do, he died for us and rose from the dead. The mm-hmm. least we can do is live for him. Yeah, and even and it's so amazing is that God didn't he doesn't leave he didn't leave anything up for uh, up to us. He uh he he ascended and he's seated at the right hand of the Father now, and he sent us his spirit. And the Spirit's what what applies salvation and works through us and gives us the strength and, and the remembrance to remember the gospel, to remember to look to Christ and not to look at ourselves. Um, and uh, so it's it's all Him. It's all about Him. And it's always been all about Him. And the problem that we come in, the, the, the reason why we have so many problems is we forget that it's all about Him. Really? And we start thinking that it's about us and what we do and this and that. It's like, no, it's all about Him. <laughs> So it's, yeah. it's not about us, but about him. Yeah. Wow. He's the one that's holding our heart, keeping our heart beating right now. He's the one that gave us the breath we just took. We're always, every day, every second of the day, receiving from God. We've never given him anything. So that's what you have in your heart. <laughs> to, to know him, yeah. Yeah, to know him. Mm-hmm. And the more you know him, it's like Adam knew Eve. Mm. Uh, Abraham knew Sarah. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's the kind of passion. Yeah. Um, Son of Solomon. Him. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Cause and then, and we know him by, by his word and we know him, uh, by following him. Right. You know, so we get to know him as we follow him. Do you know, Jesus is the one thread through all the other religious beliefs. Hmm. The Muslims mm-hmm. talk a lot about Jesus. Yeah, that he was a prophet. Yeah, yeah the Buddhists, mm-hmm. the uh, the Druze, all these these different beliefs mm-hmm. talk about Jesus. He's the one thread through all of the beliefs in the world. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, but you know they don't talk about Buddha. 
<laughs> yeah, talk about yeah. And Jesus, yeah, and Jesus said, unless you believe that I am, you will perish in your sins. Basically meaning unless, unless someone believes that he is God, yeah. they, they, they'll perish in their sins, you know? And so that that's the, yeah. Well, um, if you got one last thing you'd like to tell everyone oh, uh, that's listening to you? Um, just to look to Jesus, trust in him. He's a powerful savior. And um, he saves the uttermost. Um, God saves the uttermost, those who draw near in faith to him through Jesus Christ. That he, that God didn't leave us alone, that he didn't, um, he didn't leave it up, up to us. The great news of the gospel is that that God himself paid the price by sending his only son and the son laid his life down willingly, it really came into history and blood, bled on a bloody cross, took the wrath, the justice of God, the hell we deserved. He took on the cross and he spilled his own blood and, uh, and he rose three days later and he's alive and seated at the right hand of the father. Now ruling and reigning over all things that, that Christ, all is the, things, all things that Christ is the King of America. He's the King of India. He's the King of England. He's the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. And he, and he, and he, the command that I said before, the command that he sends out every, to everyone everywhere is to repent and believe the gospel. Um, every, the Bible talks about how everyone knows God because he's revealed himself through what he's created. But we, but we go astray and we start, and we start, um, making, worshiping things God created instead of worshiping him. But God, but God loves us so much and that he sent his only son. So look, call on the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. All who call on the name of the Lord Jesus Christ shall be saved, the Bible says. Yes. Call out to him. You know, he, he talks about, Jesus asked his disciples, and I believe us also. He said, who do men say that I am? Yeah. And uh, his disciples, some say John the Baptist, uh, some say Elijah, mm -hmm. some say a good man. But then he looked. He says, who do you say that I am? And these are men that walked with him for three and a half years. Yeah. And he says, Peter stood up. And I call him the big mouth. Peter yeah. says, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. Mm -hmm. And he told Peter, he says, you know, flesh and blood did not tell you this, mm -hmm. but my father who is in heaven. Yeah. And on this rock, I will build my church is the rock that he is the son of God. Mm -hmm. That he is the uh, uh, the son of God and the one that was sent to save us. Yeah, to save Amen. us, and that's exciting. Yeah. Um, well, you know, at the end of all of our programs, we give opportunity. Mm. Uh, I do a Bible, uh, Bible study tonight, oh, okay. from five thirty to seven, okay. from the Flint Public Library. Okay. That's to the world on a phone conversation, mm. and that again is seven zero one eight zero two five one eight zero. At about probably 520, do that. And uh, then when requested, you can put the access code, which is 6344132 pound. And then also on uh, 600 WSNL Christian Talk Radio. Mm. And those of you that have a, a smartphone can go to uh, either Google or DuckDuck and look for Christian Talk Radio. And you'll find that um, right here from Grand Blank, Michigan, that airs to. Uh, uh, Flint, Bay City, Midland, and Saginaw. And that program, I have sent uh, Justin the link as far away as Afghanistan. Oh, wow. And there's still American citizens there that yeah. Biden left oh, <laughs> wow. listening to our program. Wow. But um, the thing is, we give everyone the opportunity to receive Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. And we want everyone to know that it's not a formula. It's not reciting a sinner's prayer. It is a heart issue. Mm. Um, Billy Graham said one time that some people will miss heaven by 18 inches from their head to their heart. <laughs> yeah. No, no. But, but if, uh, could you join us uh, leading a, a prayer to everyone? Oh, okay. Yeah, you want and, me to... and just uh, bow your heads, close your eyes and repeat after me. Lord Jesus. Go ahead. Lord Jesus. Oh, I don't know. Just say Lord Jesus. Oh, no, I don't. I'm okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah. But I mean, would we do that together for the world? Oh, yeah. I just say, Lord, cry Lord out, Jesus, cry, yeah, cry I out thank you mercy. for a personal faith mm. that you are the Son of God and my Lord and my Savior. I believe that you died, you were buried, and you rose on the third day. And because I believe it, I'm born again. As you receive me, Jesus, I receive you. In Jesus' name, and all God's children said, amen and amen. And if you said that for the first time, 
Uh, you can get a hold of uh, Reverend Lawrence of LC for myself at Cities of Hope Ministry at uh, citiesofhopeministry.com, uh, which is our website. You can go to citiesofhopeministry at gmail.com uh, and leave us a message. You send us your address. We'll send you a Bible wherever you are in the world, get you in a good Bible-believing church. We believe that these 66 books that were canonized for one purpose, one purpose only to uh, let others know who Jesus Christ is. And uh, it's the beginning of your journey, beginning of your journey. And thank you very much for uh, attending uh, uh, our program, A Greater Understanding. Next week, we're going to have a um, uh, couple individuals on the program, and um, their names are, uh, we're going to be talking about, um, again, okay, um, their names are, okay, here we go, let's see. Um, well, next week, <laughs> we're going to do this program on the 18th of February, or 18th of uh, April, and uh, we're going to have a couple individuals, a father and son, that are going to be here. It is Art and Kurt Wensloff, and um, they are both going to talk about um, what they are doing as far as and what have done and what they're doing in the future for the kingdom of heaven. Thank you very much. You all be blessed. And thank you for attending another program of a greater understanding.